Well, I wanted to keep my promise. Here's my settings video, everybody. Here are the settings for my NVIDIA control panel. Most of these are pretty much as they are for everybody else. Not a lot changed from what we've been using or what I've been using and what a lot of other users have. Now, I currently have threaded optimization enabled, and that is because I'm not sure yet on that one. I just can't really tell if there's a difference on that yet. So right now it's it's on. Steam VR settings, render resolution on auto, super sample filtering turned off, overlay render quality. Well, I don't ever see the overlay, but I have it set to low anyhow. Not really any other settings in there. This is the user config file that's in the Microsoft folder. And I know sometimes we've made changes to sharpen and eye adaptation and so forth. But right now I have those turned on and the post-processing enabled. I think that might be the default. But if you make changes and you don't set that to read only, then it's going to get changed a lot anyhow. <laughs> Game mode, I have that turned off. I really don't find that necessary on a newer system, especially a system that's supposedly already optimized for gaming. But on my computer, I literally have nothing installed on here but Microsoft Flight Simulator, a few of the default programs, and my editing software. Um, you know, And then whatever I need for Flight Sim, like Airland FS and stuff like that. But otherwise, this computer does nothing but flight sim. That's its only purpose in life, and that's really all that's running on it. I got rid of everything off of this computer. Hardware, accelerated GPU scheduling, hags. I have it turned off. If you use OpenXR Toolkit, the latest version one will actually warn you and tell you you should turn it off. Variable refresh rate, that's supported in Microsoft Flight Sim to the best of my knowledge. This is really for games and apps that don't support it by default, it does. I really don't need the computer competing with it. This is a registry change that I recommend. The NDU is a network diagnostic utility, and it's always monitoring your network bandwidth and usage. So the second item from the bottom where it says start, the default on that is a number two for the data value. That means turn it on. Change it to a 4, that means do not turn it on. I'll put a link to the video on that down below. Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This keeps the memory freed up. This is a big help, especially if you people find that you go half an hour and then your flight starts to lag. Use this. Again, I will put a link to the video where this tool is explained as well as a link to download it. Highly recommend it. Those are my settings for it. They're explained in the video. Okay, in-game, DLS enabled, obviously. Uh, balance mode. Depth is turned on for reprojection. Terrain level of detail, 100. Now, right now you notice my buildings are on low, trees are on high. That's because I'm in the mountains. If I'm near cities, buildings, towns, my buildings go to high. So those things change. Clouds, water, buildings, and trees all change. The rest more or less stay where they are. But those change depending on where I am. If I'm in a rainstorm, I turn my windshield effects up. If I'm in the mountains, I turn my trees up and my buildings down. The others more or less stay where they are. Um, light shafts. If I'm flying at night, I crank that up. I mean, I want to be able to see those lights nice and, and crisp and clear. So I crank that up at night. But during the day, I don't need it cranked up, so I put it on medium. So don't think that every setting that you have is always going to be fixed. Don't be afraid to change it if you go to a different location or a different airplane. Now, I don't know if my settings would work really that good at all with the big airliners. I don't try them. I don't fly them. So, but I know that if I'm at that altitude, I get 50, 60 frames per second. So um, I like to see some traffic. I like to see planes on the ground in the airports and occasionally see somebody flying around, you know. I like to clear the sky just as if I'm in a real airplane. And so it's really nice when you're doing that and you happen to see traffic, you know, or you hear traffic called out on the radio and you can find it. I always like that. 
online functionality on, Bing data, world graphics on, photogrammetry turned off. I, I don't miss it. I really don't. Right now, live weather is turned on because I was flying in the hurricane earlier. But a lot of times that's turned off. I like to control my own weather. Um, the other stuff, more or less, is the defaults. I do have rolling cash set right now. I forgot that I had that on, quite frankly, to tell you the truth. But I don't know. You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, as they used to say. I can't tell if there really is a difference to having it on or off yet. I don't know. But right now it happens to be turned on. And it's only set at an 8 gig limit, which is pretty small, considering the size of my computer. So again, this computer really does nothing but flight simulator. It's hardwired into a gaming router on a 1.5 gig port. It is then fed wirelessly from that to my Quest headset, which is the only thing on that Wi-Fi network, and it's a 5 gig network. So I have a lot of bandwidth dedicated to nothing but virtual desktop. Now, you saw all my settings. Well, you saw most of them. There's a few more at the end. But you saw them, and this is the performance. Now, I am recording this in the Quest headset directly, but because it's also streaming it and trying to play it, the recording comes out good, but the quality isn't always as good. Now... That being said, it is substantially better now that I can fly with DirectX. I can read all my gauges in front of me. I can read every one of these gauges that's sitting in front of me. Some of the smaller things like the radio freak and so forth, I just have to lean forward a little bit. No big deal. Um, you know, <coughs> if you're flying things like the big airliners, you have to pay an awful lot of attention, attention to your gauges and everything that's in there. But you're also at 33,000 feet and not really looking at the scenery. So I'm okay if my clarity or the sharpness of my cockpit is not 100% because I need to balance it with the, what I want to see outside. Now, to me, my airplane right now looks spectacular. This is the Beechcraft D18 Twin. And, I mean, I'm looking at my textures here of that engine nacelle and the rivets and everything. I mean, it looks beautiful. My gauges, I'm looking here. I can read pretty well what I'm seeing here. It looks really good. So I'm going to try and capture the open XR settings here. And it's not going to be easy, of course, because the darn thing closes. And I'll try and zoom in a little bit on them so you can see them. Uh, and when it's on the screen, the screen jumps. So even if it's just the frame rate, right now I'm just turning on the frame rate to show you. And if you can't read that, I probably should have made the font bigger. That says 41 right now. Frames per second, 40, 41. So like I said, when I'm flying, I average 40 frames per second in almost every location. If I'm down low in New York City, okay, maybe I might be 34, 35, maybe 33, but still over 30. But out here, easily 40, 41. And if I climbed up to 5,000 feet, 6,000 feet, that number would probably jump closer to 50 without any issues. Uh, but like I said, having it on the screen and having the menu on the screen make the picture very jumpy. So don't assume that has anything to do with flying or the sim. That's that OpenXR toolkit trying to show itself on my screen. So I'm going to show you those settings here, and then I'm going to show you as best as I can what this actually looks like through the lens. It's not easy, but I'm going to use my old iPhone, which doesn't have the best cameras or the best quality. It's an old one. I think it's a 9 or a 10. I don't know. I don't pay money for phones. I pay money for flight sim. Um, a phone is just a a thing in the house. <laughs> Can't fly on it. I don't care about it. No, just kidding. Um, but I'll, I'll show you what it looks like through the lens because I know that's important as well. Also, not 100% accurate because I think the phone might actually kind of focus in a little bit on the on it. Um, but it, it still looks pretty good and you'll be able to tell. If I forgot any settings, please let me know in the comments. If there's anything else that I forgot, it's so hard to try to remember 
everything that I've changed and tweaked over the months with all these different settings. And I truly hope that this helps some of you achieve what you want to achieve with this simulator. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And thanks for commenting and liking the videos. I appreciate that too. And here we go. This is now literally the same scene that you just saw. All I did was take my headset off my head, and now I'm holding my phone up. Uh, and you can see now the white, the little, I'm trying to get the lamp. There's a lamp behind me, and that's what that little moon <laughs> reflection or something down there. It's very hard to do this and get it. I can't fit my phone in the headset, so I can only get so close. And I can't turn it. But you can see this is the headset. Here's my yoke and my pedals. But you can see, I mean, look at the uh, the altimeter, the smoothness of the, well, you can't really see it now. But when you get a chance, look at the smoothness of the altimeter as I'm climbing. I mean, it's not skipping and stuttering. It's moving smoothly. I can read the numbers here pretty well for everything that I need to see. All right, so you've seen a sample in the headset and outside. These are my virtual desktop settings, the basic settings for the desktop itself. And I hope these are readable, but I own really the boost clock rates is important there. The streaming, I right now I have the graphics quality on low. Usually it's on high. I'm trying to determine if there really is a difference. Frame rate 90, VI bit rate 150. SSW always enabled, slicing coding turned on. Open XR Toolkit, and I'm running the latest version, 1.2.0, running NIS, 110%, which is for me, 2070 by 2182, 20% sharpness, no fixed foveated rendering enabled. Appearance in here, I get, this really is preference, right? This is how you like to look at colors and brightness. This is mine, this is what you're seeing in my screen. This is how I have it set up. I think Microsoft Flight Sim colors have a long ways to go. I don't change anything in here whatsoever under inputs. Under system, you're going to see <coughs> oh, excuse me, that I do override my resolution, which here is set for 2277 by 2401. Color gains... Red and blue are where they normally are. Green I turned down for, to 47 because, as we all know, there's too much green. And then the menu, you know, what the, nothing here. This, this, but I want to be complete and show everything. So there you go. I really hope all this helps. We'll see you in the skies, and thanks for watching.